Assembling a high quality model steam plant, part 19, completing the steam plant. I'll be sorry to see this go, I've become attached to it on my workbench, but I do have quite a lot of other projects to be getting on with as soon as I have a clear workbench. I think the first job is going to be finishing off the 5A that I started a while back. I really do need to finish this, I only need to make 2-3 more pieces for it and it will work. And I also need to make some more how to build a steam engine episodes. I'm not behind with this, I originally said one episode a month and I've done six already in about two months. But I need to continue with it. The problem is that some of my jobs are commercial jobs in as much as they are paid jobs. Some jobs are just a labour of love. The Stuart 5A that I bought as a scrap engine, that's a labour of love. I really am enjoying putting that back to what it should have been in the first place. And the how to build a steam engine. Is that a labour of love? Well, yes it is really. In the previous clip you saw a hole in the chimney. I drilled that in the last episode and now I have to make a fitting to pipe the exhaust steam from the engine and the pump up the chimney into the outside world. And so here I'm making the fitting. I've drilled a hole in this piece of phosphor bronze in the lathe. And this is two imperial drill sizes less than 3 eighths of an inch. So it's tapping size for 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. And here I'm using a 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch tap to cut the thread. I'm rotating the chuck by hand currently. I could do this under power, but I would have to engage back gear. And by the time I've done that, I can have the thread cut. And indeed now it is cut, so I'm withdrawing the tap. And now I've reversed the piece of phosphor bronze in the chuck and I'm turning down the other side. And why am I doing that? Because I don't want to put a great big lump of phosphor bronze in the chimney and restrict the flow of the gases. And once again, I reverse the piece in the chuck and this time I'm turning down the other end. At this end of the piece of work, I'm going to leave a little bit more metal because the thread needs something to reinforce it. If I take too much off this side, the thread will be very weak indeed and it may break. But I haven't got to that point yet. I can still remove some more metal. So as the tool is wound back, I'm cutting some more metal coming this way as well. And then a final finishing cut in the other direction and everything should be fine. It's not going to be the strongest fitting, but then again, all it's doing is holding a copper pipe up the chimney. It's not holding anything that is vital. I am fully aware that the tip is loose. It's wobbling about a bit, and I can't really be bothered tightening it because it's quite blunt and I'm going to change it. So please don't write in and tell me that because I saw it whilst I was machining, and then I've been seeing it again as I've been editing the video. And once again, I can see that the tooltip is loose because I'm voicing over the video. And I'm sure watching this must be driving certain machinist experts completely mad, but that's not a bad thing. Once again, I've reversed the component in the chuck and I'm removing quite a lot of metal from this side. What I do need to do is drill a quarter of an inch diameter hole in this side and then I will silver solder a copper pipe into this, which will be the pipe that goes up the chimney. And then the other side of it, which is threaded, will screw into the union that is currently just sat in the chimney. Well, it was the last time you saw it anyway. To a machining purist, this must look like the machining version of avant-garde jazz. And in fact it is, it's completely free form, and I'm using a file, and yes, it has a handle on it. I've now turned the piece around in the chuck for the final time, and I'm using a quarter inch drill to drill down the middle, but not obviously all the way through. And now for some super precision engineering. I carefully hold the part inside the chimney tube and make a mark on it with a felt tip pen. And this is where I'm going to drill the quarter of an inch hole. And here's the hole that I've miraculously drilled without moving it. And this is the piece of copper pipe that I'm going to silver solder into this hole in the piece of phosphor bronze. And after I silver soldered the pipe into the piece of phosphor bronze, I found yet another use for my Barco spanner to hold the piece in place while I screw the fitting into it. Sometimes I put my Barco spanners to a very unorthodox use, this being one of them, but sometimes I even use them as micrometers for sizing pieces of metal that I'm turning. Can you believe that? This is positively engineering anarchy. But it works when I can't find my micrometer. By looking at this image, I think you must get the picture of what I'm doing. I now have a pipe that goes all the way up the chimney, so the steam will exit the chimney at the top and will not pull the fire off the end of the ceramic burner. 
All that remains to be done now is to attach it at the chimney end which I've just done and here I'm attaching the other end of the pipe to the condenser's exhaust steam outlet. Piping a high quality complicated steam plant like this takes a lot more time than you think. And it's not over yet. The last time I did a steam test I noticed that this part was leaking. This is one of the steam inlet manifold flanges fitted to the top of one of the valve chests. I'm going to remove both of these flanges because I need to give both of them a little bit of attention. I need to first of all clean them up on some sandpaper to flatten them and then fit them with some sealant. And also the union nipple on one of them is leaking. And what's just come into the picture is the sealant that I generally use on pipe fittings. Just a quick reminder never to use silicone rubber. This stuff is very similar to some stuff called Boss White that's been used for many, many years for sealing leaks on pipes. This is a very fiddly job. I was quite glad when I got to this bit, which is less fiddly, fitting the cross piece that supports the globe valve and the displacement lubricator. All I need to do now is connect up the live steam feed from the T-piece to the Twin Victoria, and the live steam pipe is lagged in string to stop you burning yourself on it. Everything gets hot on a steam plant, but some pipes are hotter than others. And as a well-known old phrase goes, it's better to be safe than to burn yourself horrendously on a very hot steam pipe. Here's an aerial view. I stood the camera up on the bench and it was quite difficult to pan down like this, but here you get the idea of how it's put together. There's one more episode to come after this one, episode 20, which will be the live steam test to verify that everything works. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.